Hello everyone and welcome to this week's extension tutorial. In this one I'm going to show you how to make installers for both Windows and for Mac. This is going to be taking you through the steps of finishing up your extension, taking the HTML, JavaScript, other files, then we'll be using a free tool called ZXP Sign CMD, which will allow you to sign your files with a free or a paid license. Then you'll have the choice of packaging it up as a ZXP file, which is essentially like a zip, or an EXE for Windows or a DMG for Mac installer. So without further ado, let's get started and we're going to take our test extension that we've been using and we're going to sign that and use it to make an installer. So we're going to first take our extension testing folder, which has all of these files here. And we're basically going to copy and paste the entire folder wherever our ZXP sign CMD is going to be. So I'm going to just make a new folder somewhere, maybe on my desktop, and call this extension signing. And then inside of here, I'm going to paste our extension testing and just call it like extension testing. I'm going to make this a string without text so it's easier to put it into command line when we need to. So the next step is to go to the Adobe CEP uh, resources on their GitHub and you can find the ZXP sign CMD and you want to download the newest version and then get whatever version is compatible with your OS. And then once you've downloaded it, I'm just going to copy and paste it in this folder that is right next to our extension testing folder with our full extension in it. Now what we're going to do is, depending on what computer you're on, if you're on Windows, you want to type in the command prompt and bring that up. Or if you're on Mac, you'll use terminal. And the first thing we need to do is basically CD or navigate to where this folder is. So on Windows, it's CD and then the folder. And then we can basically have access to this folder and run the exe file from within it. And the same things pretty much goes for Mac, except the way you call things is slightly different. But now we're going to type in the name of our ZXP sign CMD, because we're going to be running that. So we're going to say ZXP sign CMD. And then we're going to say dash sign. We're going to give it the indication that we're looking to sign some files. And the files that we want to sign are going to be in the folder called extension testing. And then the next parameter we need is the name of the output file. This can output a ZXP file, which if you're familiar, there's actual ZXP installers just to directly install an extension. So if you want it after this process, you could already have your product ready to go in a ZXP file, um, or you could continue on to make more detailed and useful installers. So we'll just call this uh, extension test. And I'm going to say 01 so I can keep track of which version I've exported. And we're going to put the extension .zxp, which is basically like a zip file, as you'll see shortly. Now, the next step is to put in our license credentials, if you have them. Um, you can make free ones, but I'm using my own that I've paid for, which has been certified through all of the SSL certificates and whatnot. And this will basically allow it to be installed on a user system without having issues. The only time these issues will come up is when we're making more specific installers like the EXE and DMG installers. Um, this will add a layer of trust which will make it much more easy and not require special permissions or pop-ups uh, when they're installing your product. If you're making just a ZXP, you can create a free uh, license no problem and it should work. And actually on the CEP resources, if you scroll down and check out um, packaging and signing tool, the ZXP Sign CMD, you can open up this document for packaging and signing the extensions. And this will, should actually have the details of what we're going over now, as well as uh, how you can create your own. So real quick, I'm going to open up a new command prompt, and I'm going to go to the same location here, into the extension signing, and I'm going to create a self-signed certificate, which just means it's one you've made yourself. And here's the code we can go through to do this. So to create it first, we need to call our ZXP sign CMD. Then we're going to tell it we need a self-signed certificate. And instead of signing it like we have in our previous one, we're going to self-sign one, which means to create one. Then we'll put in all the information it wants here. We're just going to put in a country code, a state or province, an organization. I'll just say my company. A common name, which you can use whatever you want for that as well. A password, which is very important in terms of protecting it in the future. I'm just going to say password because everyone knows that's the best password. And then lastly, we need to give it an output path with the extension that we're going to be using for the certificate, which is .p12. So we want this to be made in the root folder. We don't need to go into any subfolders or anything. So we can just type in the name. 
We're going to call this test cert.p12. And then finally, there is um, a section for options where you can put in the locality, organization unit, your email address. And if you want a certificate only valid for a certain number of days, you can put this in as well. But now when we hit enter, we should get a message saying self-signed certificate generated successfully. And now we have our test.p12 cert. So again, this self-signed test cert is only going to be good for making ZXP installers and sending that to your friends or on the market there. But when you need more complicated installers, which we'll be going into in shortly, you will need to make sure you use a purchased um, license. And next week's video will be exactly on getting your own license on both Mac and Windows to make sure that you have the best security as well as have the trust that will enable your users to install it more easily. So I'm going to take my regular certificate and bring it in here just so I can use it for this example. And going back to our signing, if you wanted now you could use your new test cert, but I'm going to type in my NT Productions Win Cert, and these are .p12 extension. And then lastly, we need to put in the password for it. So if you use the test cert, it would be password, but mine is on a sticky note which you cannot see. So it's obviously going to be blurred out on your screen because it's it's my own certificate password but once you hit enter it's going to say sign successfully and once you've signed it successfully you should see this new file pop out called extension test 01.zxp and that zxp format is where you could go off now and use zxp installer to automatically push that into your extensions folder or now we can go into the next process of making an actual installer so the next step in the process is to copy and paste this file, just make a copy of it. And then we're going to change the second one extension to zip, which we're all familiar with the zip files. And if we double click on it, you can see we have all of our normal files, plus a mime type and a meta info file with our signatures. This is the signing that we just did that gives things um, sort of the structure and integrity it needs. What signing basically does is it uses the trust built into your, your license or certificate and it sort of packages the files and makes sure that their structure is um, tied to that and secure. So if any of the files move, uh, it will stop functioning. If you moved any of these files out of here while you have the MIME type and stuff. So now we have this extension test folder. This is what folder we're going to be using to um, basically push all the files into any installer. So the first installer we're going to go over is called Inno, which is a free app for Windows. Uh, the website is jrsoftware.org and you can just go to the downloads and then download the latest um, exe file so we can make our own exe files. I also have this useful uh, resource which I'll link to which has all of the methods, classes, and objects for um, basically the coding that we're going to be doing inside of this program. So whenever you launch it, it's going to look something like this and what we can actually do is load up one of the example projects to look at how things work. Um, but I'm going to also upload sort of a preset that I use. So let's go ahead and use this um, as a starting point, which I will have a link to in the GitHub as well, which will have all the links and information about all this and any template files that you need. So basically, uh, this is for an extension called Motion Pack. And all you need to do is know that we need to change the app name to be whatever our app name is, our extension testing. The app version, which is whatever version you're releasing, 1.00. The publisher name, which is me, your app URL if you have a specific website for it, and then also the app exe name, which will be the name sort of for the uh, packager itself. Then going over the setup here, we are going to use a sign tool, and I'm going to also link to the information to set up the sign tool, which essentially will let you use that license that you've either purchased or created. You'll need, of course, a purchased one. It's a bit of a long-winded process that I might have to make a separate tutorial on, but essentially you have to make sure you have this um, Microsoft SDK file called signtool.exe, and essentially you have to put in this complicated bit of code, um, which I'm going to actually include the signtool.exe file because it's very hard to find online and you have to download a bunch of SDKs to find it. Um, so I'm going to include the, the uh, file for that, but you basically then will use the command sign-f, and then you refer to your PFX file, which you can easily take your P12 and change it to a PFX file because they are the same format. And then the T tag, and then it, you can reference basically this timestamp website. And you're also then gonna need your password. 
So this part is really complicated and you can just go through the guide and look at it yourself or request that I make another tutorial on it specifically in the future. But essentially this will allow you to include your signed file that you purchased or created and use that to authenticate your own installer and give it more security and less pop-ups for the users. So that's what the sign tool is for. We're gonna have that. We're also gonna say yes to make it uninstallable. And anytime we make a new installer, we need to make a new app ID. So I'll highlight everything after the first bracket. Then I'll go to tools and click on generate GUID. And then click on yes. And now we've got a new custom name for this setup. And then we can set up where we're gonna output these files once we save the EXE. So I'll select this folder here. Then we can also set up the name of the file and the compression defaults are fine as well. Then if you want, you can set up custom icons uh, like this. We're gonna set up the uninstall motion pack, which we need to change to extension testing. So if you can see, if I go to my C drive, which is the default location of uninstall exe here, which if you don't know where any of these are located that are highlighted in purple or anything, you can go into this whole guide here and they're all located inside of here. And basically in my C drive is where all of the uh, extension uninstallers are gonna be located. So you can just double click on it and uninstall it. Then we're gonna just set it up with English. If you have other languages, um, you can include those as well. And the main thing is the files. So with the files, we just wanna reference the path and the name of our extension test here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this inside of here. And we wanna put in a star after it to include all of the files within our folder. If you don't, it'll just take the folder. So we wanna make sure we include all the files inside of it. And then the destination of these are gonna be our common files 32, which is this is a shortcut to, and then our extensions folder. And we wanna put this in the folder called extension testing. And then the flags we're gonna use are ignore versions. So if there's previous ones installed, it will overwrite them recurse subdirectories. That means it's gonna create all the subfolders automatically for us. And then it will create all the subdirectories if we want as well. And then lastly, in reference to our install delete under here, we're basically gonna tell it to delete all the files and or directories of our um, location here with our extension testing folder. So delete the extension testing folder and all of its subdirectories. So now I'm gonna go ahead and save this as and just call it uh, extension test. And now I'm gonna click on build compile. And now if you did everything right, it'll start including all of your files and packaging them up and save it out to the location you selected, which in my case is going to be right here. We now have our extension testing installer. So now you could go ahead and test it out and run it and make sure you install it. Now, in order to get this over onto our Mac, what I'm gonna do is take my extension test with all of our folders and uh, signed files in it, and just stick it on a flash drive. So I've tried several times now to get this distribution program to work with my specific extension testing that I've been using, but I can't seem to. So what I'm gonna do is include another template for this. I'm gonna go ahead and attach the motion pack uh, template that I use underneath um, essentially how this program works is we go into the project here, you set up the name of the installer, and then remove everything down here except check the remove DS store files option. You can set up the custom presentation of your um, installer if you want, and other requirements. But the main thing is under the packages here, we can set up the name of the installer. So we can just say something like extension testing installer. I'm also gonna change the other information really quick. You can set the version of it. The main thing is under payload. You want to recreate the structure of the folders here. So it goes as far as the application support. Then you can right click, add a new folder, call it Adobe. Inside of the Adobe folder, we need to make a new CEP folder. And inside of that, our extensions, where all of our extensions are located. And then we have our com.motion pack, which contains all of our files here. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to be extension testing and I'm going to remove all of these files and then I'm going to take my actual new extension files and drag and drop them into there Then I'll click on finish and now if you want you can uh, set up a certificate um, if you have one for your Mac which will just give you this certificate of authenticity as well as less error pop-ups when your user installs so once you're ready we can click on control B 
And once you're done building it, you'll get your installer file, which we can now go one level deeper. And if you have a spare $5, you can invest in DMG Canvas, which is an awesome additional application to create a nice installer canvas, which will give you an actual DMG file. So if you have the $5 to spend, go ahead. Essentially, what we can do is just add in our package file as well as any backgrounds. So I have this one here that I use all the time. And what we're gonna then do is simply go in here and add files under contents. And then under here, we can go in and find your package file that's been created. In this case, I'm just using a different one for an example. But then we can go in and uh, adjust the options, increase the icon size. You can also add your um, developer code signing license if you've got that, set up the name. And then all you really have to do is click on build and then you'll be able to save your DMG file out with your new extension. And then once complete, you can take that newly created DMG file straight out of the program and then send it back onto your flash drive, onto the Windows or whatever your main computer is and package them together and send them off. For me personally, I like to create a folder with the uh, name of the extension that I'm working on and then files after it. And then in here, I'll throw in all the DMG and EXE files and then zip them up. And then this is where versioning comes in very importantly to make sure um, you have a nice uh, template used to version things so you know, oh, this version, this was working, this version, another feature was working, uh, what, what changed in that time period. But that's going to do it for this tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Those are the basics of creating the various types of installers for extensions. Again, you can create a ZXP file and get things out distributed quickly, but you're going to have a lot more hiccups when it comes to user experience and installation. And then you have Inno set up on Windows to create EXE files for free with lots of uh, customization and very few limitations. Then you have packages on Mac, which is free, where you can take those extension files and distribute them to the uh, file location you need. And then if you want to spend five extra dollars to make things even less hiccupy, uh, you can get DMG Canvas to wrap everything in a DMG file, beautify it, and have it professionally looking like most software. That's going to do it for this video, guys. All the links and file templates will be in the description down below in the GitHub link. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below or any ideas for future videos. Of course, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon down below to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on Monday and Thursday. And of course, leave the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Thanks again for watching, everyone, and we'll see you in the next one.